Hello, good people of the world. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out. Welcome back, friends and family. If you guys are not new here, thank you so much every day for your support and love. Now, I am going to be painting this big hutch back here, okay? As you can see, it is large. It is a large piece of furniture, okay? About, it's taller than I am, taller than I am, which is not very tall because I'm five foot three. So, this piece of furniture has a story behind it and I need to let you guys know so that you know that you're not alone if you are doing custom work and it maybe doesn't go the way you want it to go. So if you wanna see me do this and you wanna hear the story about this, stay here. All right, everybody. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how we got to the journey of this piece. I had a custom for a client and she collects tea sets. And so she had something very similar. It was a waterfall piece that was very similar to this that she had brought from the States and it was too big, okay? So we tried to get into my Land Rover, it was too big. They couldn't put it in their van. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna work on site. But we went to her house and we were working on site and then I got the inside painted, I got everything going good, had all the hinges taped, and I stepped back and the door just fell apart. <laughs> it just fell apart. When I say it fell apart, I mean it fell apart and the glass came with it. And all I could do was just stand there and go, oh my goodness. I was like, ah! So, here are some pictures of what happened. My client is amazing and she totally understood and she got it for free so it wasn't like a family heirloom or anything like that, thank God. And so we decided that because she has small children and it was already compromised, possibly putting another piece of glass in the door may not fix the problem, it wasn't worth the risk and we didn't know what shape the the joints of the other door were in because this thing literally guys i've never had a piece just fall apart it was like the tongue and groove joints that made the thing just fell off so that's what happened back to this piece we needed to find something that would hold all her stuff and so i found this piece and it was in luxembourg about an hour away and i went there and i was like this is going to be perfect but when we tried to put it in my land rover it was like this this too wide. So I had to go all the way back home and I had Desiree, my great friend who has not left yet. She came with her bigger SUV and she got it here. So here we are. This is the piece that we will be working on with my client. So if you guys have ever had something go crazy wrong and you have wrong turns, don't worry about it. I removed the back of this piece, but before I did, I labeled it. So this piece has, the back of it has two different sections that overlap. And I wanted to make sure that I put the panels back where they came from. So a really good thing to do is label your things that you pull apart, whether it be a drawer or doors or hinges or like this, the back of this piece, I'm labeling it so that I know that I put the panels back where they came from, but I'm gonna take them off because I'm gonna paint the inside of this piece and it's gonna make it so much easier to paint the inside. Next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this entire piece inside and out with Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. And then I'm gonna go over it with clean water and a clean rag to get any residual soap off or residual cleaner off. 
And then because I'm using silk mineral paint, it does need to be scuff sanded when you're using a mineral paint. And so after this dries, I'm going to scuff sand the inside of the piece, but I will be using the chalk mineral paint on the outside. So I don't need to do that. So I'm gonna clean the entire piece, do that part of prep. And then for the inside, I'm gonna do a scuff sand. I'm gonna wipe that away and that will be ready for silk. The outside of the piece, since it's already cleaned, is ready for paint, the chalk mineral line. For the inside of this piece, I'm gonna use Baja Gray in the Silk Mineral line. This is going to allow the inside to be lighter, and that way when my client puts her tea sets inside of it, there's a contrast, and so hopefully, in theory, these tea sets will stand out a little bit more on a lighter background. So this is what the inside looks like. And so now the inside is painted and then I painted the panels and I also painted the shelves so that everything looks really nice on the inside of this piece. I'm going to reassemble the back and then we're going to work on the outside of this piece. Remember for the outside of this piece, I cleaned it really well. So that is ready for paint. Now I'm using antebellum blue for the bottom and I'm gonna go in, I laid my piece on its back so that I can get underneath the piece and get all of the legs and the angles of the legs really, really well. But we're gonna be doing some shading and highlighting on this piece. And so I want the bottom of it to be darker and that is why I did antebellum blue first on the legs and up a little bit into the body. So that way we had that darker color. But let me show you something here really quick. So I went over the side of it without blocking it, doing a stain blocking primer. And the this color is Vintage Duck Egg. Now this is what happens when you use a lighter color and you put it over a piece that is prone to bleeding and you think it's okay, you think that the paint is okay, and then you put a clear coat over top of it. So a lot of people will not see this until they put a water-based clear coat over top of their paint, and this is what is going to happen if you do not properly block your piece. So bleed through doesn't always happen right away. Your paint might look nice, and then when you go to put your clear coat on, bam, it pulls those tannins in because you haven't blocked it properly. So. I wanted to show you that because we are going to block this entire piece. I just did that on the side because I knew that that was what was going to happen. And so I just wanted to give you guys a visual of what will happen if you do not block a piece. And maybe you don't see bleed through right away, but once you put a top coat on, it is going to look awful. Look at that. That looks awful, awful, awful. So I went in and I put boss on here. And then what I'm doing now is I'm going to, and I'm spraying it with water. So if I was going to have bleed through at this point with me spritzing it with water and painting it, you would see it. So I'm doing another coat of vintage duck egg over the blocking primer, which was boss. And it was clear is what I used so that I can show you what the difference is when you are blocking your piece. You want to always make sure that you block darker pieces or when they're made with wood that is prone to bleed through. So this is dry and then up there's dry, but now the bottom is blocked and the top did not have a stain blocker on it. But once we put a top coat or we sprayed it with water, it all came through. So that is why it's so important for you to put a blocking primer on. So the entire piece has a blocking primer. It was clear. And now I'm going to finish putting a base coat of vintage duck egg on the rest of the piece. And then we are going to do our blending with shading and highlighting. go in and do some blending so you need a paintbrush for each color you're going to need a spritz bottle or a mister bottle you're going to need a clean dry neutral brush so that way you can help blend everything so what I'm doing here is I'm taking the antebellum blue and I am going to visualize that anywhere the antebellum blue is is where I want my darker shadows to be and so I'm going to outline we're just working on the that little panel in the front but this is what I will do on the entire piece 
So we're going to outline the areas that I want it to be darker in the antebellum blue. And once I'm done outlining them in the antebellum blue, I am going to take my vintage duck egg and I am going to paint it right next to the antebellum blue, almost on top of it. So I'm going to spritz it and then I'm going to take my vintage duck egg paintbrush and I'm just going to go right next to it and kind of try to do blends, go up and down vertically, do some circles. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to blend this vintage duck egg into the antebellum blue right now, but we want to still keep the outside darker. So we're just doing like a rough blend right now and then what I'm going to do is go back with my antebellum blue brush. I'm not putting a ton of paint on there and I'm going to go back around where I was with a light hand and I'm just going to keep toggling between those two. So here's my clean dry neutral brush and I'm taking that and I am going in circles. I'm going horizontal, going vertically, and I'm trying to kind of blend that together to get an idea of what it's going to look like. This is not the final blend on this, but I like to step back and get an idea of where my shadows are going to be. And so that's what I did there. Now I go back and I'm spritzing it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my antebellum blue and I'm going to go around the edges again so that I have the shading. This kind of blending sometimes is, it's almost like layering, but when you use like colors, so antebellum blue and vintage duck egg are super similar. So this is very easy. And so we're just misting. I'm taking my vintage duck egg and I'm going over the antebellum blue with a light hand. So that way I'm not taking away the antebellum blue, but I'm helping blend it. So we're feathering those colors into each other. And you're just kind of feathering those colors into each other. You outline a little bit and then you toggle between the vintage duck egg and the antebellum blue brushes and just use a light hand and you're just kind of blending them into each other and creating those shadow effects. And then once you're kind of happy with it, you're going to take your clean dry neutral brush and you're going to do your final blend. I have the outside of that panel blended and where I want it, I am going to do some highlighting on the inside. So what I'm doing is I'm taking vintage duck egg and I'm putting that in the center and I'm still going around with the antebellum blue around the edges. And then in the very center, I'm going to take fluff and I am going to add that to the center of this panel. So that way we can add some highlighting to it. Once I add the fluff, I make sure that I go in and I blend it right away. And then once I'm happy with the highlight in the center, I'm going to go around the edge of the fluff with the vintage duck egg. And then I'm going to do my antebellum blue one more time around the edges. And then we are going to blend the entire piece. So, or the entire panel, we're going to mist it. I'm going to take my clean dry neutral brush. I'm going to go vertical, horizontal, diagonal, and we are going to blend them all into each other. And you're going to see that there are shadows shadows, there's highlights, shading, it looks really nice. This is such a big piece that I'm going to work in sections, so I'm going to just show you. Sit back and watch me do it on the door, but I do the same exact technique on the entire piece and I just work in sections. So I'm going to do this part, then I'll do the other panel, then I'll do the top of the doors, and I'll do the sides the same exact way.
People ask me all the time how I get paint off of mirrors and glass. I don't worry about getting paint on those things. I just take a utility knife and I scrape it off carefully afterwards once everything's dry and I get nice clean smooth lines. So some people use cards, some people use tape. I don't. I just take a utility knife and I remove it later on. I'm gonna use Easy Peasy Spray Wax to seal this entire piece, but I'm also gonna put this on the entire piece because I will be using dark wax as well and it helps for me to wipe it back easier. So I'm going to spray this on the entire piece. It's gonna seal it in. I'm going to wipe it in with a microfiber cloth. And then once it dries in about an hour, I'm going to use Best Dang Wax in black and I am going to put this on the areas where I want a little bit more dimension. So we're using the black Vesting Wax. I am using a, it's technically it's an artist, it's not an artist brush, it's a makeup brush. That's what I use, I like makeup brushes. So I'm using a smaller brush to get into the cracks and crevices and that way I can have even more dimension in those areas and it'll have a more shadowed effect. After I applied the black wax, I'm gonna go back in with my Easy Peasy Spray Wax and I'm gonna use that to remove any of the areas that are too dark. So you can take your microfiber cloth, you can spray it with Easy Peasy Spray Wax and you can use that as almost an eraser. So that way I can have it a little bit lighter and it will still have a really good shaded dimension, but I also am able to take back some of that wax. I felt like this piece needed one added, one just last little touch of something. So I'm using gold gilding wax and I'm just lightly dusting it and gilding it over the entire piece. So that way it's not super crazy, but when you get up close, you can see that that is just another layer of dimension on this beautiful hutch. this piece is done this video is done thank you guys so much for being patient with me this week I went to Portugal last weekend ran my 25th half marathon 20th European country and getting back in the swing of things so here is the piece let me know what you guys think remember everything I use is in the description below and stay on here if you want to see some fully staged photos until next time happy creating and I will see you guys later bye hey. Tell you what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is
so pretty.